Today's speaker is Herb Hadley. Herb has spent his career developing innovative enterprise asset management solutions in several asset intensive industries, including refining, power generation, and gas. He has managed chemical, industrial, and mechanical engineers on projects around the globe. Herb has an undergraduate degree in international development from Ohio State University, as well as an MBA from the Keller Graduate School of Management in Chicago. Herb currently leads the global EAM practice at Utopia, where he oversees multiple projects while continuing to, to develop new solutions as well as methodologies. With that, Herb, I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Terry. And hello, everyone. This is Herb Hadley. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, as Terry said, we'll try to uh, make the best use of your time. Uh, our goal is, uh, my goal is to uh, finish the formal presentation in about 20 minutes, allowing 10 minutes or so for uh, questions at the end of this section. Uh, the, the title of today's presentation, Migrating Ellipse to SAP, uh, is a general discussion. We'll be talking somewhat more about mining than other industries. Uh, because there are so many people around the world, uh, including many people on this call, that are in the mining industry. But MinCom uh, Ellipse is in use by military installations, by power generation companies, uh, companies of all kinds. And many of the comments I'll be making about mining are completely uh, valid and applicable to other industries as well. A, a quick overview of, of why we're having this discussion. Uh, MinCom is one of the oldest, uh, what used to be called CMMS systems, that's Computer Maintenance Management Software Systems. Um, been around a long time and has gone through uh, several changes in ownership in the last couple of years. And my experience over several decades is that when companies are uh, you know, in, in a matter of flux, that is, they change ownership, they change their platform, their development, other issues. Uh, many customers of those, of those companies then take a look and say, should we make a change? Should we change to something different, uh, upgrade from the current software, or to do uh, something like moving to SAP? Uh, so here's a quick view. You can see a couple of changes. Most recently, Francisco Partners. Here's a press release from last year, February, uh, showing ADB is purchasing uh, uh, MinCom. Um, again, setting the stage for why people might want to change. Uh, again, a continuity of software ownership is one of the key reasons people review uh, their, their software system. Uh, also, many of the uh, current users of Ellipse have uh, been concerned about out-of-date technology, whether the developer side of the business has kept up to date and whether the, uh, the technology is uh, applicable for their current uses, uh, especially software compatibility. The comments I've gotten from uh, people inside the uh, MinCom Ellipse uh, eco space, uh, users, developers otherwise, is issues related to implementation of mobile technology, um, version upgrades based on customization, which is relatively easy uh, in uh, Ellipse, and third-party third -party solutions. Uh, and that's kind of a two-edged sword about uh, third-party solutions. It can be a positive in that there are positive people building new software applications that bolt on to yours, or it can be negative as in third-party solutions that uh, are not really applicable to current needs, nor are they upgradable. One of the issues also is non-standard architecture and terminology. We'll go into some more detail related to that. And also, there are some issues related to has uh, Ellipse kept up to date uh, in financial reporting methodologies and requirements worldwide. and uh, also in the regulatory compliance field. Also, difficulty of integration, new acquisitions, and new mines, or new businesses of any kind for that matter. So moving, moving on ahead, why, um, why should you be even listening to this discussion uh, about Utopia and SAP and 
all the things that uh, we're discussing today. I'm not going to go through this. Many people on this call already are familiar with Utopia. Uh, broadly speaking, we're a data management company. Uh, we're worldwide. We're doing very, very well. Four-time uh, winner of the uh, uh, Inc. magazine, 5,000 fastest growing companies in America, uh, doing quite well. We have a very broad base of industrial customers. This is just a selection that I made of our customer base of asset intensive industries. And in the mining space, you can see Newmont, BHP, Rio Tinto. Uh, we have others that I didn't show here. In the, uh, the general heavy industry, here's representations of you know, ExxonMobil, the largest uh, refining company in the world, uh, Suncor, a major player in Canada, uh, DuPont, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of oil and gas, as well as uh, power generation, rail, and, uh, and other large companies. Again, this is only for credibility that uh, we do have the ability to uh, speak with authority on this subject. So now to the, uh, the main topic. This is what we're going to be talking about in the, in the next 15 minutes or so. Um, we'll just jump right at it. And please real, realize I'll be ending with a case study which may bring into focus some of the technical details we'll be talking about as we go forward. The main reason why transition to SAP, everything we've talked about plus more. It allows you to uh, come up to the modern standard of uh, how uh, ERP systems are, should be run. Uh, SAP uh, has, a, has a great uh, platform, uh, great functionality. Uh, we've, uh, at Utopia, been a strong partner with, you, uh, with SAP for many years. Um, continuing on, why Utopia? And more specifically, what we're going to be talking about today, ways to move uh, data from uh, Ellipse to SAP using methodologies that uh, Utopia has already built, um, rather than bringing in someone who doesn't know anything about mining, doesn't know anything about Ellipse, doesn't know anything about um, uh, the, the actual technical objects, that you should consider Utopia. We've already done all these things. And we've developed a rapid deployment solution that I'll talk about in a moment that, in essence, offers you know, customers to use our methodologies faster at a lower cost than, than others. And also, industry leaders, broadly speaking, have already made the transition from, S from Ellipse to SAP. Uh, Newmont, BHP, and Rio, all at one time in their history, were on Ellipse and all of them now have moved to SAP. So how do you get started? Uh, and this could be a long discussion, but I'm just hitting the high points. First, you make a commitment to go to SAP. Second, you need to get your data right. And as it shows here, uh, know what the quality is. Know the usability of your data. Cleanse it, standardize it, harmonize it across multiple locations. Those are things that Utopia has done hundreds of times for companies around the world. Uh, choose a systems integrator. Uh, Utopia is not an SI. Uh, we populate the structure and blueprint that is established uh, in discussions between an SI and the customer. Um, we, uh, we specialize in data, not in, in uh, methodology and the things that SIs do. Um, we do uh, at Utopia have, as I said, best practice migration tools, rapid deployment solution, and we are very much a uh, advanced user of SAP tools. So visually, this is what it looks like. There's a comprehensive solution uh, between SAP, Utopia, and a systems integrator uh, that would then set up the blueprinting. So just as an example of the section that Ut Utopia has done and could do, uh, is this rapid deployment solution. And the reason we, I'm showing this at this point is to give you just a, a feel for what we do and how we do it. In this instance, we, uh, we think there are 65 thereabouts technical objects that are commonplace in virtually every migration from uh, Ellipse to SAP. The um, basic assumptions, as you see here, and this is the, our simplest kind of approach kind of a vanilla flavor that uh, fits most instances, but not all. And you'll see 
the next couple of slides what I'm talking about. The, the, the basic benefit of using the RDS solution from Utopia is the green bar at the bottom. Uh, if you focus on that, you'll see that the, uh, the tasks and timelines have been shortened to roughly half of what they would be in a typical migration that uh, would not be using the, uh, the tool set from uh, Utopia. And so the, the benefit to the customer is it's faster, it's standardized, it's not reinventing the wheel, and it also saves a significant amount of money. Um, the, the bar at the right basically is showing that uh, the use of Utopia services plus the RDS licenses for the specific tools that we would be using. And this, in, by RDS licenses, it's in essence the, uh, the, the data services and other tools that we've built uh, specific to the technical objects. And it is scalable from 65 objects. So compare, in this instance, uh, the same 65 objects would, take, would cost something north of $1.4 million in a standard uh, data migration. Using the tool set uh, cuts that down to uh, less than a million and a more typical, um, you know, using more um, objects and having objects that are not included in our standard set of 65 may increase the price somewhat, but you're still talking about a, a decrease in time and price of at least 20% by using our lessons learned. Now, now that you've seen the rapid deployment solution, let me touch very quickly on why using the tool set makes sense. First of all, the basic orientation that uh, MinCom is still built on its original COBOL structure. Very different than the SAP object orientation. Uh, the cross-reference, uh, one, one thing that's difficult about doing this type of process is doing a cross-reference for equivalency between uh, the various technical objects. And I'll go into some more detail in a moment, but this is just a quick view saying that the way Ellipse is naming particular um, objects um, and uh, attributes is uh, very different than SAP, and it takes a while and, frankly, a significant amount of expertise to sort out exactly what it is you're migrating from Ellipse into SAP. The tool set that we use, I'm, I'll have three or four slides here very quickly to give you an idea that, yes, this is not just uh, something we've, we've talked about. This is stuff we've done. And I picked a few oddball ones from MinCom just to show uh, visually that, yes, we do have a uh, data migration methodology. Yes, it is the SAP standard methodology. Yes, it uses SAP tools. You know, here it is for uh, something called an inventory object, MSF 100. Here's another for MSF 120 vendors uh, that shows how it's done uh, from a migration. Uh, likewise, a supplier object. Again, all of these are just validations that, yes, we've done this. We know how to do it. It's uh, something you can use our, our tool set and our expertise to shorten the timeline and increase your uh, success rate. Uh, here's just a, a quick partial screen of a load template showing that uh, there are certain fields that are mandatory, certain fields that are, are optional, there are certain characteristics, text descriptions, etc. that we load to. So all this is already done. Uh, not something you have to reinvent. This is something that of course, have to be validated by your SI as part of your blueprint, but my point is we know how to do this. And here's an example of what we've already done. Uh, Numon is a client of ours. Uh, many people on the call will be familiar with them. They're a very large mining company in multiple locations around the world. And here's what we, in essence, did for them uh, and are doing for them. I think the last go live just was completed successfully. But they were going from five ellipse systems in um, very different geographies, uh, down to one SAP instance. And we moved uh, several different modules, uh, not just the, uh, the EAM kind of PM, MM kind of things that I normally deal with, but a broader uh, number of items, uh, including payroll and FICO. So we do have the technical objects for many, many different things already mapped and ready to go. 
Um, as you can see, in this instance, the migrated 69 technical objects and 71 info types, which uh, the info types are related to the HR. So there is the, uh, the quick 20-minute summary. Um, I have a few more slides that I'll show uh, if we have time based on the questions that uh, may be generated. So Terry, um, I'll turn it back to you and see if we have some questions. Sure, thanks Herb. Um, so the floor is now open for any questions you may have. You can enter them into your, the question pane located on the right hand side of your window, the GoToWebinar toolbar. And while people start to compile um, additional end of presentation questions, we do have a couple Herb that um, were submitted during your presentation. Um, and, and this, I guess, we can go back to the Newmont situation. Uh, someone indicated they have a company with operations in multiple company in multiple countries. Excuse me. So, how do you deal with the challenges of multiple tax codes, languages, products across multiple geographies? Oh, that's that's a that's a great question. Um, well, first, we, we've already proven we can do it, but the the challenges really are related to the specific. Um, the specific items by tax code. So in the case of Newmont, for example, each of the various countries have their own particular way in which the taxes are collected and, and how that actually fits into the, um, uh, the various modules in SAP. And um, we have already built several of these, but the, the point that I think is important is that Utopia has the ability to deal with any geography, any language, any uh, any type of technical object. Uh, it's simply a matter that we, as I said, a rapid deployment solution. We defined it specifically as you know 69 items, but within that 69 were I think two, maybe three tax um, items or objects. Uh, we would be able to substitute for other countries, other tax jurisdictions, anything like that. So. Uh, whomever asked that question, feel reassured, it's not a big deal dealing with uh, many different countries, many different tax areas, and frankly, even different languages if necessary. Okay, so we have another question. Um, this one goes back to the data issue. Is there a best time to perform data cleansing and standardization? Our systems integrator doesn't have that as part of our plan. Ah, well, that, unfortunately, that's quite true. That, uh, it's typical. Uh, oftentimes, system integrators and and the customers uh, don't really think much about the data. They're thinking about the process of, of moving the data. And the best practice to answer this person's question, best practice is to deal with data issues before you try to migrate your data. Uh, and data issues can be broadly stated as you, you have multiple source systems. Uh, that could be an ellipse, it could be access databases, it could be uh, Excel spreadsheets, anything. You need to determine which of those uh, data sources should be consolidated, standardized, cleansed, deduped, and migrated. But there may be instances where uh, there's data that should not be migrated or go through any of these processes, but simply be um, abandoned or archived. And there are two or three different ways we can archive, and that's a topic for another discussion, but um, it's oftentimes useful to have uh, old data available in some way, either in a native format or as a link within SAP or many other things we could do. But the key point is deal with your data first, not last, and as a bit of um, kind of statistics associated with this, the um, uh, SAP Users Group did a study a few years ago about uh, problems related to data migration and when those problems occur. And the data migration, the data quality issues generally occur in the last 20% of the timeline. In other words, they oftentimes come up when you do your first data load and say, oh, that data didn't load. Well, why didn't it load? Uh, well, it may be that there's just missing data, inappropriate data, inaccurate, uh, incomplete data, duplicate data, all kinds of issues. But by then, it's oftentimes too late. So the second part of the SAP Users Group study was um, it happens late, but then another part of it is 
what are the, the serious ramifications to the success of the project? And uh, the serious ramifications are the corporate sponsor may see the migration as a failure because when it's over, his reports don't make sense. And the reason they don't make sense is not because the migration wasn't successful, it's because the data uh, does not support the reports that he thinks are important. So very important uh, question, and the answer is deal with your data issues first, not last. Um, Herb, also um, we've been asked, uh, since you've discussed quite a bit about equipment and assets in terms of um, moving from ellipse, can you address um, data migration experience we've had with other parts of SAP functionality? I know you mentioned it a little bit with Newmont, but can you expound on that? Uh, yes, I can. Um, let me just scroll just a quick moment to the SAP whiteboard. Um, we, we are able to move any of the technical objects uh, from any source system to SAP. And the, the standard data migration methodology, yeah, out of the box kind of from SAP, includes about, I think, 45, 50 technical objects. Uh, over the years and literally hundreds of data migrations that have been performed by Utopia, we've built something north of, uh, I think, probably 150, maybe even 200 technical objects that migrate. Uh, and that's in every possible area of SAP and every possible type of data from uh, measurement points, transactional to um, HR, anything imaginable. But the, the basic thing to cover in the next two minutes, and I'll flash through this really quickly, is irrespective of the technical object or the information to be moved from a legacy system into SAP, it's the same process. There's, if the data comes from somewhere, it could be any of the things you see on the left hand of the screen, databases, applications, flat files, anything. And the first thing you do is extract that information, put it in a staging area, and as I said earlier, now's the time to really set up and cleanse, transform, validate, load, and use all the things you're seeing there in terms of name and address parsing, matching, transforms, all the things that we know how to do uh, using primarily the SAP Business Objects Data Services platform. Now, this then is, uh, is based on, as you see from the right-hand side, we do an extract of the SAP configuration so that when we're doing all of these processes, we're actually basing our processes on how the SI and the customer have set up their SAP for the functionality that they're uh, wanting to implement uh, at their business. So without going into too much detail, we, we do lots of different analytics, we do reconciliations, we do analysis, we do tests, we involve management. Um, there's lots of things going on uh, and our approach is to be completely transparent, communicate regularly, provide appropriate governance to the process and uh, make sure that the customer actually receives the full benefit of the, of the data that's available to him. And a, a validation of our methodology is that we were, Utopia was a data services partner of the year for SAP in North America in 2010, and we quite literally are the go-to company for all things related to data. Now, the, the, the next step that I'll show very quickly is what happens after go live? How do we keep the data clean? How do we keep it um, usable for a customer? after the go-live, and we have a whole set of, of ways that we do uh, do that, real-time data governance, uh, standardization of uh, methodologies. Um, our, we have an entire area of our, our business uh, called uh, uh, enterprise data lifecycle management, so we can spend a lot of time on that as well. So uh, perhaps that answers that question.